Good morning on day four. Let me freshen up a little and I'll explain where I slept. So this was my camping spot last night. All the hostels were booked up. So I thought, why not just save the money, camp out. It's not strictly legal, but in my opinion, when it comes to camping, you know, I'm innocent until proven guilty. So I was sleeping literally right there behind me. And this is what I wake up to with this beautiful view over Namur. Filming a little time lapse. And once that's done, I'm gonna go to a boulangerie and have a lovely French style breakfast. And then I'm gonna hit the road. I'm gonna go towards Dinan, another smaller, beautiful city along the river Meuse. And the ride is flat for about 35 kilometers. That's Dinan coming up in the distance. That was a nice slow and steady ride. My legs are still pretty cooked from yesterday. So I just ate a full baguette for lunch. That has revived me. Because I'm so tired, I'm gonna find myself a campsite. I found one about 10 kilometers away. Oh, look at this. So, turns out the little seven and a half kilometers to the campsite is one continuous uphill. Camera doesn't do it justice, but I'm moving forward at a snail's pace. Took a break, ate a banana, let's go. You know when you imagine a place, you have a, a specific picture in mind? Well, for me, when I was planning this trip, I was after something like this, just Quiet roads surrounded by tall coniferous trees, fresh air, a dense forest. It's really, I love this. Little rivers. <laughs> now this is way better than the campsite in France. So after arriving in the mountainside campsite, I set up my tent, which now felt fairly routine, and then went for a dip in the nearby river before finishing the day off with a nice cold beer. Good morning on day five. I did not sleep too well. It was freezing last night and my sleeping bag, I guess, is made for temperatures of around 15 degrees. I'm not sure what that means, but it's clearly not enough for what I'm doing. I bought this to travel around the Middle East and it's considerably warmer in the Middle East. And I'm off on day five. And although the landscapes are stunning, I'm surrounded by forests and rivers. With that comes quite a challenging ride. It's just zigzagging roads up and down hills, which makes it very hard to estimate how long it'll take you to get to your destination. At the end of the day, it's an extreme privilege to be able to just go out and cycle. A lot of people in the world don't have this opportunity to set themselves these rather irrational personal challenges. So for that, I'm extremely grateful. As far as I understand, there's trails that run right across Europe. A number of them pass through Belgium and basically you can cycle from I think, the north of Norway all the way to Spain on these paths that are completely segregated from traffic. So this path right here is actually an old railway track that's been converted into a cycle and walking path. So I've entered the province of Luxembourg, which is in Belgium, on the border of Luxembourg, the country, the city. And this is where the hills, they really, they start and they don't stop until I get there. Hello. I've been pedaling in the lowest gear possible for a good 45 minutes now. Just one huge hill. In fairness, I could have researched all this before departing on my trip. I honestly just looked at the 2D map and assumed it would be flat. But maybe had I known that it was gonna be this difficult and mountainous, I might have abandoned the trip before ever departing. I hope there's a very enjoyable downhill once I reach the peak. I've been traveling in the past by car or by Jeep through Central Asia along the Pamir Highway or in the mountains of Romania. And I've seen cyclists just in the middle of nowhere climbing super steep hills. I just didn't get it. Who in their right mind would choose to do this? You know, they're gonna be out for six, seven hours just cycling up and down hills. 
and uh, here I am. <laughs> One of those seemingly crazy people. I reached the peak and I think that makes me a true champlain. It's gonna be downhill from here for the next while. <laughs> that made the climb very worthwhile. I'm flying down now. I'm gonna call it a day and save the last 100 kilometers for tomorrow. I found myself a little campsite and I'm gonna set up my tent right here. Oh, today was a big day, bigger than I anticipated. Okay, I think it's time to take a cold dip in the river. It'll be really good for my legs. Oh yeah, a really good day. I'm really proud of what my legs have done today. And my mind, of course, this is very mental. So I'm gonna take a quick dip. I don't really want to, to be honest. But I know this is gonna do my legs a lot of good. Oh God, it's so cold. It, it's ice cold. I don't know, not ice cold, but it's probably like four degrees. Oh, I think that's enough pain and suffering for one day. Good morning on day six. I did not get a good night of sleep last night because of the high altitude that I'm at up in the mountains. I didn't factor that it would be considerably colder. Well, literally freezing. I got up in the middle of the night. I was too cold to sleep to find frost all over the tent and over the grass. So I just shivered myself to sleep. I'm heading towards Luxembourg city to visit my sister and get a, a proper night under a hard roof. But that's a uh, hundred kilometers away and the landscape is very mountainous. It's gonna, it's gonna be a push. I'm gonna do my very best. Just keep pushing until I can no more and hopefully that will suffice to get me to Luxembourg. I don't know what this place is, but there's just a bunch of petite animals. No, you go away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my God, no, no. Hey. Yes, good job. It's a dwarf pony. It's a dwarf of a dwarf. Hey, buddy. All right, let's get back to it. I'm entering Bastogne. It seems to have some sort of World War I or N2 significance. I'm approaching the Luxembourg country city border. Pretty hungry. Gonna get a good lunch here in Bastogne. And I think that'll give me the strength to keep going. No matter what, I'm crossing into Luxembourg today. Lunch done. Next stop, Luxembourg. I'll have officially gone right across Belgium from the French border over to the Luxembourg border in about half an hour's time. Let's go. Yep, in Luxembourg. Third country of this trip calls for a little celebration. I made it. Yeah, there was no sign to indicate that I crossed over the border, but I just had a feeling. The roads were suddenly paved slightly differently. The houses were built in a different style and the cars were much nicer. So this is Luxembourg. I never, never knew it would be this beautiful. It's really green. Okay, Luxembourg really tops it in terms of cycling infrastructure. I'm in the middle of nowhere and there's pretty much bicycle highways. So the GoPro is out of battery. I'm about 20 kilometers out from the city center of Luxembourg. I arrived in Luxembourg shortly thereafter and spent the next couple days with my big sister. And this brings us to the end of the adventure. And I have made it. I'm here in Luxembourg. And so in this video, I have shown you what I did over the course of six days, but I think it's worthwhile also sharing why. Why cycle across a country? It is, after all, physically and mentally draining. I can identify the following reason. The first is the context that we are in. With the onset of COVID, many things in my little world came to a grinding halt. 
I found myself out of work and locked out of the UAE where I had been living and I felt that some cycling and solitude away from all the negative news could do me no harm. And the second reason is because I love cycling and I always have. Whether it's on a race bike, a city bike or a mountain bike, I've been on one since the age of four. And I truly believe that a world with less cars and more bikes is a better world, which is in part why I became an urban planner. And through my career, I've been contributing to the development of cycle paths in many cities as far away as Addis Ababa in Ethiopia. And my third and final reason is I wanted to prove to myself that I do not need to travel to a distant country and culture to have a rich experience. So as I wrap up this video, I must also add that my 428 kilometer adventure will be laughable to some. I've seen some videos of individuals cover more than 400 kilometers a day and others going on multi-year trips. So if you've done a similar trip to mine or a far greater trip, I would be very interested in hearing your why. So feel free to share your why in the comments below, I'd be very interested. Anyhow, this was my first of hopefully many cycle camping adventures, and if I can do it, you can too, and I highly, highly recommend it. And to support your planning and preparation, I will also upload a video showing some tips and mobile applications that help me reach Luxembourg, and I'll also show you some of the gear that I brought with me, and this should hopefully help you avoid some of the mistakes I made. For instance, when you're planning your trip, remember not only to factor distance, but also topography. So that's enough from me. Take good care and all the best from Cambodia where I'm currently living and make sure to keep pedaling. I certainly am and I hope to see you soon on the road.